everyone, it's Lee the Appraiser for another episode of Amazing Appraising here in our brand new APR 57 gallery. Uh, we've had a lot of requests for these appraisals and site here, and we have a couple very interesting artifacts. Uh, they were brought to us by a very prominent man who was the carpenter at the Studio 54, the iconic club in New York City. His name is Mr. Izzy and he was there for many years and the club I think started in Studio 54, I think it started about 1979. And um, it was known as in its heyday as the most famous nightclub in the world. Uh, people, celebrities, athletes, uh, politicians, you name it, anyone that was the it person of that generation wanted to make an appearance there and it was not like this was not a thing that was open once a year, once a month, every single night, constantly, 24-7. That is where the actions, uh, that's where the, everything took place, okay? Whether um, it was, uh, there were rumors that had drug uh, escapades over there, sex issues, all these things. <laughs> I'm getting... Uh, as we're talking, I'm getting the, uh, the, the, our friend here, Mr. Izzy, is doing sign language that, uh, I don't know, it looks like a lot of four letter words in sign language. I can't read sign language, but I do comprehend with what he's saying. So it was known as the it place to be. You would have at that time, Donald and Ivanka Trump, Liza Minnelli, Bianca Jagger, Mick Jagger, on and on and on. I, I, I think I saw a couple years ago, uh, right before the pandemic, they made a documentary on the Studio 54. There was, uh, I think, another movie they made with Roy Cohen about his personal life, the famous lawyer. Um, and it was, and then they, uh, I guess, they shook down, uh, what's his name, uh, Schrager, one of the owners. It was a very, very cool movie. I love documentaries, personally. Anyhow, so... Our friend Izzy here has some very interesting artifacts you brought in here, and we're going to look and appraise them for you on the spot. So what we have here is a, it's called a box frame. The frame is about an inch and a half wide in depth. It has a picture or a drawing or a piece of art of a, it looks like a London uh, truck, a Highgate Hill, Finchley Road. It says William Cooper Limited, Moving Pictures. Um, and it's a uh, pretty cool little, it looks like a, a cool piece. It looks like it was, things were cut out of here in wood and then hand colored by pen and markers and they made it into what's called a little piece of art. So um, people want to know, the gentleman who brought it in here, he wanted to know what it is, what it's worth. Um, so. You know, I take many facets of the item into consideration. I have a good sense what to look for. So I never appraise anything until I look at the entire piece. So I'm going to look at the back too. And what I do is I figure things out, parts, things that I call pros and cons, the things that make it authentic. Now, before I put a value on something, the appraisal is the last thing I do. Before that, I do also an authentication process. For me to figure out exactly what the item is, what it might spo what it is supposed to be, and therefore, once I figure out what it is, the easy part is putting a value on, especially if the item is not genuine. So what we have here, as I said, it looks like a piece of art. It looks like it's uh, combined with like little small pieces of wood that were glued together, showing like some sort of little car or truck, and it looks like it's hand painted over that. We turn it around, and ah, we have a label here. And this is a printed label. And it says here, B type London bus. In 1904, Thomas Tilling started the first double-decker service from Peckham to Oxford Circus. Again, this is in England. This specifically built motor buses were combined the effort of C.F. Milnes, Milnes and company, a famous tram car builder and the German firm of Damilar. Now, Damilar is of course the company that I think formed uh, with Chrysler, Daimler and Chrysler is one of the largest um, car companies in the world. Again, I haven't looked any of this up. It's all coming to you live 
on the spot, etc. So then it goes on to say the 34 double decker bus became a standard to all London companies until long after the First World War. The London General Omnibus Company began in 1905, and although at the time there were only 20 motor buses working in London, by 1908, over oh, the period of three years, there were almost 1,100. Among the most famous companies used the B-type chassis were the Aero, the Vanguard, National Express, Premier, and the Metropolitan. The most famous B-type is the Old Bill, which served as a transport on the Western Front during World War II. The three and a half ton bus is now, a sh is now on show at the museum, transport of Chap Cl uh, Clap Clapham. Okay. So the gentleman wants to know what's this worth? Is it original, et cetera, et cetera. So the first big clue here is this label. This is a printed label. So that's gonna tell us that this is not one of a kind and it's not individually rare. If they made one, five, 10, 20, they typically would not put a printed label on it. They would write the information by hand. This is a label that was put on this piece. So it presumably, since they printed this label, they had to make hundreds, if not thousands of these items. So that is the first clue that this is not an extremely rare limited piece, okay? The fact that they mentioned the original Zone Museum I also believe is that this is an item that was sold at maybe a museum gift shop, maybe a car gift shop, something along those lines. That's the first clue that this is not a rare piece, but a piece that was sort of made for decorative value and sold basically through a tourist store. Second clue, if you look closely here, you are gonna have two prices that were read, written in red ink, you have that unusual formation with the number four, which means that was either uh, four pounds or four shillings, and then it equals $10. So what that means is at one point or another, this was sold for four pounds, equivalent of 10 US dollars when this was sold. This type of writing on it, I would say shows and the printing on it, if I had a guess, this was made and sold probably about 1970s. And um, actually, I don't have the time this second, but you know what? You could probably Google and figure out when four pounds or shilling equaled $10. And that will tell you exactly when this was sold. Because there, uh, you have a ratio there. So um, that'll give you a hint. And I would be, you know, I, my guess would be 1970s is when this piece was made. And it is a very nice gift item. Um, there is some writing in the lower right, some, some, some paint scribble. It does not look like it's clear enough for us to say who the artist was. Um, I can't really tell. It doesn't look like a signature. Um, but that would be my estimate on this, that this is a piece that was um, made as a sort of a gift item in a tourist store. Probably, my guess is 1970s. It came with this printed certificate or description on it. It came with the equivalent of this valuation and it was sold at that time retail for about 10 US dollars. So today, estimated retail, maybe 50 to 100. That would be my guess. Uh, the person that I think would be most apt to buy this might be somebody who was a collector of old cars or uh, had an interest in old uh, buses, etc., etc. That would be my guess on this. Um, next, so let's just, you know, we'll make these into private episodes. So uh, anyone that has anything else about cars, art, that they want to have uh, appraised or sold, just contact us, text us, call us at apr57.com, 917-439-9610. You can send us pictures, and we're happy to answer any inquiries you have. And um, that's the story. So uh, we hope to hear from you soon, okay? And stick around, subscribe to our channel. We're going to have a couple other items that we're going to be talking about shortly. Thank you very much.